Welcome back students uh, to the lecture series on introduction to AWS. As part of our today's uh, lecture series, we are going to focus on AWS Lambda. So, what is exactly Lambda? It will automize your services. It will automize your tasks. Automatically, the entire uh, process is going to be done. That we are going to see how it will automize the things. And uh, we are going to basically focus on what is a serverless computing. Then we'll look at uh, a sample uh, demo, how to run your AWS Lambda. Later on, we will be comparing Lambda with virtual machines. So these are the three topics which we are going to cover under AWS Lambda. So what is serverless computing? Basically, as the term indicates, serverless, it does not appear as similar. What we think serverless means without server, our computing task is going to be performed. No. What does serverless means it? It enables you to build and run your applications without worrying regarding the configuration of the server. Here, the server's configuration, scaling or scaling down or else uh, enhancing the performance, everything is going to be taken care by the AWS provider. At the same time, what benefits you are going to get? It is a type of service where everything is fully managed, provisioned from the provider. In this case, AWS is a provider and scaled as per the need or requirement. And the benefits are, you need not to worry about the servers, provision and mani managing or uh, scaling up of uh, resources as per the need, you need not to worry. Never pay for ideal time. Basically what happens is, if you are using your EC2 instance, if you are deploying EC2 instance on AWS cloud. If you had launched and it is in a running state, the billing is going to be carried out. Even if you use or if you do not use. But over here, if you are going with uh, serverless computing, it depends upon uh, the request whenever a particular event occurs. During that only, it will be charging you. So, never pay for the computing when it is ideal and this provides you high availability. It means that the entire servers which are being provisioned and managed by AWS are fault tolerant. Less components to manage. You need to manage only the code which you are being developing and deploying. No need to worry about the infrastructure. So, less components to manage. Then what is Lambda? Basically, Lambda is a computing platform. In AWS, we do have other computing platforms such as EC2 or else uh, ECS or else ECS, Elastic C Container Service. All these are the services which also provides you computing facility. And one such computing facility which is been provisioned by AWS is Lambda. Uh, later on we will be comparing Lambda and EC2 in our further slides. So, how Lambda works? You are going to just run your function or functional code by using lambda and uh, this functional code will be triggered whenever there is an event is going to be driven. For example, in our uh, demo, what we are going to see is we will be having a lambda function, we will be having a lambda function and this lambda function is being automated to perform any of the event which will occur on S3. 
such as uploading of file or deleting of file or else uh, we can say some event in the form of um, upload or delete happens on S3. Then automatically what happens is it will be triggered into your DynamoDB. Here we are using S3 and DynamoDB. Whenever a file is being uploaded onto S3, the trigger is going to be automated onto your DynamoDB using a function, functional code written in Lambda. This is what we are going to see. This is the working style which has been explained. Uh, your code needs to be uploaded onto your Lambda functions and Lambda functions uh, process the code or it executes the code whenever a particular trigger happens from any of the services or mobile apps or endpoints. Whenever there is a trigger, this Lambda function will execute the code which you are going to write it up and uh, when it is executing, then only it will be bill, uh, charging you. So, let us have a demo on this. So, what I will be doing is, I will be creating a bucket, create bucket, name the bucket. Uh, for time being, I am creating as first May, first May 2024, some sample. The name has been given, SL permissions enabled, then just unselect all the block axis, I acknowledge. click on create bucket. So, first May 2024 20, sample has been created over here. This is what it has been created. A bucket has been created. Now, second step is I need to create a DynamoDB database. Let us create DynamoDB database, just search for Dynamo, DynamoDB, create a table over here, I will be creating a table over here with the name employees over here employees table had been created, partition key which will be your primary key, I am having it as employee id, emp underscore id, I will be using this table name and employee id in my code, table name and employee id, remaining uh, settings I am leaving it as default, clicking on create table. So, I had created a bucket and I had created a table in DynamoDB. And uh, meanwhile, let us go and uh, create a function in Lambda. That is a third service which I will be using is Lambda. Just uh, create a function over here. From scratch, name your function, sample function for class, I am create. I mean naming my function as sample function underscore class. Selecting the version of my. All these are the programming language which Lambda supports, such as Python, Java, .NET, Node.js. I am selecting my version as uh, Python 3.8 for my today's demo. And uh, change your permissions, use an existing permission 
and the permission which I will be using is lab role and click on create function. So, your lambda function has been created. Now, what I will be doing is I will be copying my code over here. Yeah, I had uh, my code over here. I will be selecting my lambda code, copy, getting back to the function, paste your code. So, here is my lambda code, where I will be using uh, two things, one is bucket, the bucket which has been created over there and the file which I will be uploading and the file is going to be in JSON format. These two variables are passed over here as parameters as bucket key to the S3 client and it will be stored in the object of JSON and this JSON object is being read by the read function stored the entire data in your uh, JSON file variable. The variable is been passed to JSON loads where it will be stored in JSON dictionary and this is one parameter. The second one is the table which I had created that is employees table we had created in DynamoDB and uh, we will be accessing the DynamoDB to put an item from your JSON dictionary. Whatever uh, data which is there in our JSON file that will be loaded into JSON dictionary and that has been put in the table and what table? Your employee table. So, this is what happens uh, using this automized code. Fine. So, just uh, deploy this once the code has been written, deploy your service successfully your function has been created. Just test it, I am giving it as test, you need to test your function and over here, okay, no need of this just click on save. The test has been successfully saved, it means that no, uh, no problem with the code. First you need to deploy, then you need to test. Once this has been done, what I will be doing is, I will open, I will be opening my S3 in a new tab. Parallelly, I will be opening my Lam, uh, DynamoDB. in a new tab. Just open your DynamoDB, tables, employees, uh, explore the items, yeah. Presently, there are no items in my employee table. In my employee table, there are no items. When I will be uploading the data, into my S3 bucket, it will be uh, loading the, the content into DynamoDB. For this to happen, one thing which I have to do is I need to add a trigger. Add a trigger, which type of uh, trigger you want to add? I want to add a trigger on my S3 bucket. When and what is my S3 bucket? First May 2024 sample. And when some event or some file hap, uh, is uploaded into my S3, then it has to push the content into my DynamoDB add. That is it. Now, the rest of the thing will be taken care by your code. Whenever there is a file upload in S3, it will push the data into your employees. Let us test it 
upload a file, upload, add files, hello.json, open. Uh, basically, this hello.json file yeah, has certain JSON data that uh, we can have a look at. Notepad, okay. It has uh, the employee ID. I said you that it is our primary key employee ID. This has been used and the employee ID is 123, name as Bob, age is 38. This employee ID will be used as a primary key. It has to match with the uh, partition key. Let us get back to our code. Yeah. Now, upload. As soon as uh, it gets succeeded, go back to your DynamoDB, refresh the page. You can see that the employee ID, the employee ID 123 has been loaded with a age of 38 and name of that pers person is Bob. This is how your automization works with Lambda. And uh, coming to the differences. between virtual machine and your AWS Lambda is the granularity at virtualization. The granularity at virtualization. What happens over here is uh, in virtualization, your uh, function is going to be virtualized function as a virtualization or else we can say it as a process virtualization. One of the process virtualization which we are famous is JVM, Java virtual machine which we are known to. Whereas, uh, this is about your lambda and coming to your EC2, here entire machine is going to be virtualized. It means that from operating system, hardware, everything is virtualized. If you go on with scalability, here the depending on the function, it will automatically scale your infrastructure. Whereas, coming to EC2, you need to use external service such as auto scaling in order to have a scaling of your resources up or down. Coming to high availability, it is highly fault tolerant as it is the resources has been provisioned, managed, maintained by AWS. Here, if you want high availability, then you need to use some other resource of AWS to provision high availability. By default, uh, the EC2 instances are not highly available. Whereas, coming to maintenance, here you need not to manage or, ma or maintain anything. AWS is going to be maintaining everything. Whereas, over here, uh, the customer or the user needs to maintain everything. Whereas, deployment here with minimal deployment efforts, you can deploy your function. Whereas, coming to here, you need to deploy your own services, whatever such as S3, the connectivity between EC2 and S3. Coming to pricing model, it provides you least pricing model. Whenever you execute a code, only at that time they are going to charge you. Whereas, coming to EC2, it is going to be charging per second. As much as time you are uh, running your EC2, that much time you are going to be charged. That is it from this video. Thank you.